one go. And I think that we are live now. Erev tov lekulam. Ani choshev shanachnu kvar ba'avir. Good evening to Ethan Winner. Ethan, how are you? Great. Um, I'm not going to introduce you yet, but uh, yeah. we will take a few minutes. Ethan, um, Asaf, Erev tov. Mash nuncha. Erev tov. How are you? Everything is well here. מצוין, גם אותך אני עדיין לא מציג, למרות שרבים כבר מכירים אותך, אבל אנחנו גם ניקח ממש מספר שניות עד שאנשים יתחילו להצטרף. אני בינתיים אבדוק האם אנחנו אקשלי בתוך הלייב, וכמו שראיתם אנחנו פה בהרכב כזה קיבוץ גלויות נקרא לזה ככה, יש פה אנשים דוברי שפות זרות, זרות ממדינות אחרות, יש פה אנשים מרחובות? אסף מרחובות, נכון? Yeah. My hometown, so, אז בכלל, ו- ו- ואני פה יושב בנורזי בגבעתיים, אז כן, יש, לו, יש פה הרבה סקרנות לקראת מה שהולך לקרות פה, אני גם יודע שלא סיפרנו יותר מדי, וזהו, אני רואה שאנחנו כבר באוויר, אני רואה שאנחנו משדרים בתוך הקבוצה, אז הכל בסדר, אני אשים את הלייב אה, ככה ברקע, כדי שאני אוכל לראות מה קורה, רק שניונת. מצוין. אוקיי, okay, מצוין. אוקיי, okay, חברים, איך אתם? Guys, how are you? Great. אוקיי, okay, are you? Uh, I'm perfect. I, I just tell uh, to our viewers in Hebrew uh, that we're going to wait a little bit. Uh, חברים, אנחנו נתקן ממש כמו בדרך כלל, משהו כמו שלוש, ארבע דקות. עד שכל המאחרים שלנו יצטרפו ללייב הדו-שבועי, למרות שבזמן האחרון הוא קורה, קורה פעם בשבוע, הלייב השבועי שלנו באמזון נונסטופ, אנחנו כבר התחלנו לפנק, לארגן לכם אינפורמציה על בסיס שבועי, והיום באמת מחכה לכם הפתעה נעימה. אז חבר'ה, עד שאתם תצטרפו ועד שקצב הצופים שלנו יגדל, אנחנו ככה נתקשקש פה ונעביר כמה שניות, ונתחיל בלייב מאוד מעניין. איתן, I just told to our viewers that we are, we will take a few minutes. And sure. we, will, we will wait for all the uh, who are late now. And uh, in the meanwhile, can you tell me uh, where you're located right now? Sure. We got me vanti, my shamarta. As I speak Hebrew a little. Yeah. I know this is the first. Uh, this is the first English broadcast, so I'm very honored to be a part. But if yeah, people want me to speak in Hebrew, um, I could try and break my teeth a little. So I'm I'm speaking to you from New York City, from, from Midtown Manhattan. Yeah, live. right near, right live near, uh, yeah, near Times Square, near the center of uh, this part of the world. Yeah. So you're, you're in the middle of the day right now, correct? Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's, it's two o'clock in the afternoon. So, so here is a quiet um, late, here is yeah. uh, 9 p.m. Yeah. Okay. I'm still, I'm still with my coffee. I'm still, I'm still working on it. אוקיי. So I hope that it's a great opportunity to share our uh, broadcast now in our personal gr- groups and personal profiles. So we will take one minute. I, do it, I will do it as well. And Eitan and Asaf, you're going to have to do it. So let's go for it. Share that information. It will help to everybody. Working on that. אוקיי, okay, חברים, אז כמו שאמרתי לחבר'ה פה, באנגלית, שאנחנו מבקשים מכולכם לשתף את הלייב הזה, כי לא הוגן רק שצופי אמזון נונסטופ, אה, האהובים עלינו, ייהנו מהלייבים שלנו. אה, ראוי ורצוי שגם אנשים אחרים מבחוץ, קולגות, חברים, אה, ייהנו ויראו את מה שיש לנו להציג היום. <אז> אוקיי. Okay. Okay. 
and it's bothering me. Okay, now it's okay. So, so did you share the live? Yeah. Yeah, you promise? <laughs> I think so. Um, I, ha I have a few screens over here, but I think I, I think it worked. If not, I'll do it right after. Okay, perfect. So, okay, I did I did it as well. Okay, did it as well. Perfect. Okay. So we're ready to start, I think. Okay. So hey, Eitan, hey, Asaf, good evening. It's a great honor to have you both here. Thank you for coming. Uh, Ethan, thank you for cleaning your schedule for us. I know that it's the middle of the day in New York City now, and uh, you are a quite busy person. So thank you. No, my pleasure. And, OK. So Ethan, I know that uh, we actually we met uh, not so while ago, and uh, I was really personally impressed uh, from, the, your, from your company achievements. Okay, so, and especially I was very impressed from the Guys, I can hear myself again. Okay. Okay, now, now it's okay. So, especially I was very impressed from the incomes from your customers. Mm -hmm. And so, it's not common that uh, we are hosting an expert like, like you. So, first of all, can you tell about yourself, about your company? And second of all, can you give to our viewers after uh, that part of them are new sellers on Amazon or going to be new sellers on Amazon in the next few months, a few tips for uh, making success on 2020? Sure. Okay, perfect. Um, so let's, let's sure, so you want, you want me to begin? Who are you, Ethan? <laughs> and what are you doing here? Okay. Hi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm uh, Ethan Wiener. Um, I'm here because I know Asaf, and then I met Yigal. Um, I run a company called Quantum Networks, um, based out of New York, as I said. Um, we're an online reseller, mostly Amazon focused. I've been doing it probably for almost 11 years. So when I started on Amazon, it was quite different than it is today. Um, and our, our model has changed uh, since then. Um, so, Basically today we, we really manage brands. Um, so we work with different brands, whether we're buying and selling brands and exclusively representing them on Amazon and doing all the work for them, meaning the advertising and driving the traffic and the content, but we're also purchasing inventory, dealing with logistics, dealing with returns. Um, we also make our own accessories and bundle different products together. So there's like a little private label a little reseller component, kind of the different models. You know, as we grew on Amazon, if you see from this first slide, we grew really quickly with lots of sales when it was less competitive. But over the last few years, we kind of um, adjusted our model to be a little more, I guess, stable and profitable. Um, and if you go to the next slide, uh, Yigal. Mm -hmm. can, you, can you click on the next uh, yeah. slide? Yeah, yeah. sure. Sure, sure. I, I'm going to share the um, presentation because I think that only us seeing that uh, right now. Okay. So here's a, yeah. So here's a little overview about me. Again, Quantum Networks is my company. Um, I'm also involved with something called the Prosper Show, which is a large Amazon seller show that I encourage mm -hmm. all of you to come to, even though it's in uh, Las Vegas and kind of far away. It's an amazing show. It's one of the first seller shows um, that ever existed. Um, I started I started it with some ex-Amazon people, and we grew it significantly over the last few years. And after that, sold the show. But it's a really amazing show. It's not maybe like the, some of the private label shows you're used to, but it's very thorough with lots of vendors and attendees. Um, and, yeah, this second slide kind of just is a little, I guess, two-sentence overview of what we do. So it's full some, full service e-commerce solution for brands, um, mostly focused on Amazon. So... Again, we combine retail capabilities, marketing, merchandising, just trying to help our brands increase revenue uh, and monitor their presence. So that's like a very uh, brief overview. And if you go to the next slide, Egal, um, you just see some highlights of the different types of brands we work with. So we work with some okay. higher end audio brands. We have some small startups and Kickstarter type brands. It's kind of diverse. Um, again, we've been doing it for over 10 years. We're a top 200 seller. Um, and this is just a little overview of what Quantum does. Um, in addition, there's a company 
I work with called Trayport, which I'll talk about a bit later, but I really wanted to try to add value here and discuss product returns and okay. the whole fun topic and also, you know, Amazon auditing, et cetera, just so I can hopefully add okay. value to the C board. Guys, we are not going to talk today about how to manage uh, in the correct way your brand on Amazon. We're going to, we're going to talk about returns today, right? Yes. So even though, um, even though that's what my company mostly does, um, I had a very big issue with returns, and I actually started a company called Trayport to help me with that. And now we're a service provider. Um, okay. But it's really because they understood the problem and what, what, what created it with, the, with returns. Right. So I'm going to go into that with the slide. So as you see from this yeah. first slide, uh, this is a very high number. Thirty percent of products ordered online are returned, um, as opposed to ten percent in store. So on Amazon, I don't know what the average rate is. It depends on the category. It's probably between 10 and 12% uh, on, for apparel attire, for electronics, or for, for lower cost item, it's lower. But the problem is if you see just from the slide, it's almost a three times multiple of online returns. So as you guys who are sellers or will be sellers, you really need to have a strategy on how to handle returns. So if it's your own private brand or you're selling another brand, what do you do with it when it comes back? Can you resell it? Do you throw it in the garbage? What are the costs? If you don't understand the costs and your return rates are high, which I'll get to, you're actually losing money. So um, I want to just address that a bit. So if you go to the next slide. Okay. So Return. it's a little overview about yeah. returns. Again, this is kind of obvious, but margins are getting hurt because of Amazon returns. You really have to manage it. Most companies are trying to get more on top of that. Uh, those are the companies I deal with um, and the trade board helps with. And it just continues to increase. Um, next slide. This is a slide I like, um, number six, if you can go to the next one. Yeah, so this is, I go a little deep here. I actually gave a, a lecture at the Prosper Show about this. And I asked the room different questions of who understands the fees. And I've spoken to lots of experts. I, I think there was like, 800 people in the room, maybe they were shy, but not, not everyone really understood all the fees and all the, the claims. So just be kitsur, when you're selling on Amazon, what, what money are you losing when there's a return? So first of all, you have this FBA pick fee. That's when you're actually shipping the item to Amazon. And then there's a pack fee, and there's a prep fee. That's all the, the shipments and the fees that you pay just to ship an item. So when it's returned, obviously you lose all that money straight up. But then what about after that? So what most people don't know, I wonder how many people know this, when Amazon gets a product back, they actually charge you a fee to process the return. Um, do you guys know what that fee is or how that works? Let, let, me, let me ask the, our viewers. ואל תתפישו להגיד שלא, עד שאמזון לוקחת לכם, מעבר לתהליך של ה... מעבר לתהליך של ה-FBA פיז הרגילים, איזשהו פי שאמזון לוקחת כאשר אתם מחזירים מוצר חזרה לתוך המחסנים של אמזון. האם אתם בכלל ידעתם שיש פי כזה, ואם כן, מה הוא הפי? I'm personally not know. Right, so, so the answer, so maybe someone will answer. The answer is they charge you, um, I think it's... 15 to 20 percent of the commission of the sale this and it maxes out of the, commission. Of, of the commission so let's say you sold a hundred hundred dollar item and the commission yeah. on the sale was 15 percent so it's 15 dollars they charge mm -hmm. you 15 or 20 percent of 15 dollars but it maxes out at five dollars so really they're they're providing you a service right because if they get a return back they actually mm -hmm. do something interesting they look at it and if it's really good condition they'll put it back into inventory for you so that you could sell it again. Because a lot of times people buy the wrong item, it comes back, it's totally perfect, and they put it mm -hmm. back into stock. But you actually pay for that service and you don't realize it. The stuff that they don't, they'll send back to you. And then you have to deal with that balagan, which is what I'm gonna explain. In the next line, there's a removal fee. So every removal is 50 cents a unit. As you guys know, probably if you're selling, the removals come back very messy and in different packages, and sometimes you don't get the wrong items. If you do want to destroy it, there's a fee of 15 cents, which a lot of you probably do, because you have low-cost yeah. items. 
with soft lines, which is like apparel and clothing and pigadim, um, there's a lot of return shipping costs. So Amazon wants to encourage um, apparel sales and they want to compete with Zappos and all these apparel sites. So they actually make you pay for the return shipping um, in a MFN or SFP. So, and that's just the last icon. If you're doing SFP, seller fulfilled prime or MFN, where you're not sending to FBA, but you're sending on your own, you have to cover the return shipping and they automatically debit it from your account. So there's other fees within those specific models, but this is a nice overview of the fees and it just shows you how there's so many to be aware of and that most people don't even know that. So we can go to the next slide. Okay. Um, sorry. Um, wait, could you go up to? This one? Sheva. Sheva. Yeah, okay. Perfect. Yeah, okay. so this is just my, what I usually kind of recommend. Instead of getting hands on, we say get hands off, right? So, like, I like to outsource people, like to outsource stuff overseas or to, to forwarding companies or logistics companies, especially if you're in Israel, you don't have the services there. What about returns? Um, people want to do it on their own. They figure they'll fix the problem or it's not such a big deal. Um, so you can automate the customer service and you could you can make sure you're getting the items back and, and deal with customers who want to return items. Um, so I mentioned two companies here. Obviously one is, is mine, which is Tradeport, but even Returnly is a cool company. It's actually a Shopify plugin that streams in the returns process and the credits. Um, Tradeport's this company that I work, work with and, and help to grow, and we actually handle this whole process. And we do a lot of the below. So we re repairing and reselling items as new or renewed or refurbished. So we'll get back the items from Amazon um, and test them and grade them. If they're really new, we could send it back to Amazon uh, for a fee. If they're not, or they need to be refurbished or repaired, um, we could do that. And then usually when you do Amazon renewed, which is like a new program, if done properly, you could usually get 20 to 30% more value than selling something as open box, which is often a lower value on eBay or on Amazon. And yeah. so those are cool options um, that it may make sense to explore depending on your, your items and your price points. Aidan, I have a question. Sure. Um, this process is actually what I know from a different world called reverse logistics. Yep. How complex is it in the reverse logistics to do all of that, what you just described? Because as I found yes. as I know from the mobile world, it's very complicated. How yeah, it's, it? it's very complicated. I'm going to go to it in a slide later, but it's so complicated that me, myself, not that I'm a genius or amazing, but I couldn't figure it out on my own, and it just takes a lot of work and effort. And the point is, do you want to spend time worrying about repair, or do you want to just grow your business? And if you could find a company that does it, great. Now, it depends on the products. It depends on how big you are, if you could do it in-house. But as you know, and we spoke about this, um, Asaf, especially with cell phones and electronics, you need right. testing, you need grading, you have certain certain certifications, there's environmental requirements. So it gets pretty complicated, especially, and Amazon doesn't make it easier because they make a lot of mistakes. And I'll get to that. So maybe we go to the next slide. Um, I do have a question later on on, on refurbishment. So because then... Sure. Yeah, but I would. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll talk about it more in, in the process, but let's go to the yeah, number eight. So this is hidden costs. So as I said, what is it costing you um, versus what it would cost another company to do it? And are you even paying attention to it? So I've met with big companies, even like Fortune 100 companies, and I don't, I've yet to meet a CFO or a person who really knows their per unit return cost because there's so many fees, as I mentioned, and again, Amazon doesn't make it easier. So you have to ask the question, you know, it doesn't make sense for me to do it. What's my cost versus having someone else do it? And even if they charge more, great, but they have to deal, they're dealing with it and it's out of my hands. Um, furthermore, if you look at the slide, um, a lot of times people would send back the wrong item from Amazon and you can open a claim and get money back, which we'll talk about later, but you have to have a system and photographs and a way to do it. Um, you could open cases that you got damaged items or you have a bundle with missing components or you have a damaged box or you didn't even get the whole box. So people are sending tens of thousands of bo removal boxes and you could have one box with $10,000 of items that just never came back. So you assume it did, 
but you don't have a system to test it because it doesn't exist. Um, we've built some, some things like that, but it's, it's quite challenging. And then once you have the product back, what do you do? So you have to do the relisting and you have to list it on eBay and Amazon and you have to test the products because if they're really damaged and you sell them and they're not good, then you get bad feedback and then your account gets suspended and RTV is returned to vendor. What if you want to send it back to the vendor? It, that, that makes sense and you get a credit, but it's a whole process that we've kind of perfected where you have to track serial numbers and credits and put into a whole flow. Um, and obviously missing and, missing and damaged items. Um, next slide. So I, I'm just gonna blow through this because I just mentioned it quickly and I wanna speed it up, but this is the whole point. You don't understand the costs and they can be quite shocking. All the labor, shipping, warehouse space, overhead, etc. Again, on the bottom, lost credits, lost value. So it's really important whether slide 10, whether you outsource it or whether you do it in house, um, that's fine, but make a decision. So we offer a solution that makes sense for some sellers, which I'll, which I'll talk about. But the point here is really to educate people about it. And again, if you have it, and when it does or doesn't make sense, um, we could talk about that. Um, next slide. So this is what this is what Tradeport does. If you look at um, Khadisray, um, again, Tradeport's been doing it for 15 years. They were like a reverse repair company that I kind of got involved with and brought them more into the e-commerce space, primarily through this Prosper show. And we've grown since then. And most of our customers are, are e-commerce, but we have retailers, warranty companies, distributors. We have international solutions as well. And as you see, we'll do all these. Uh, these services below. This is not the best slide, sorry, but we can send back to FBA, receiving, inspection, testing, refurbishing, grading, merchandising, recycling, the whole deal. And the point is like, let us do returns. You focus on what you're good at, which is what I mentioned before. That's all we focus on. And to a soft point, it's definitely not easy. It's kind of a dirty business, uh, literally, but it's important and it's needed. And we've gotten better at it over the years. And if you just go to slide 12, it's a little small and I, I could send this out, but it, it's kind of, Asaf said, how complicated is it? This is a little infographic explaining um, how it works. If you go to Stimmes, right? You got that? I'm sorry? You're, are you on uh, 12? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, good. With, with, a, with, a, with a picture, right? Yeah. Um, it just kind of goes through the process. We receive the items. We have an integration with Amazon, so we know what's removed. Amazon sends a removal file, but most people don't receive that or look at that. It has all the tracking numbers. So we could track by which box was received, what's in each box, and then see if there's any issues or cases where there's a mistake. And then we could open claims and either get money back or kind of just make sure we know what's going on. Then we'll audit the products and we could test them. Um, and then we could merchandise them, which is selling them. Um, and then we could ship them again. Additionally, or if we don't want to sell them, or if we, you want it to be sent back to your account, um, that works too. So since most of the people on this webinar are probably private label sellers, it, the returns are even more challenging. So a really good customer for Tradeport is probably 40 or $50 and above price point. Because once you get to lower price points with all the labor and the removal and the touches, it's often not cost effective to even deal with, which is why it may make sense to destroy. However, if you have a lot of volume, we have a lot of private label sellers that don't really want to sell, you know, a used, you know, Yigal's, uh, whatever plunger, but they still don't want to throw it out. So as I said, a lot of times Amazon will send items back that are probably fine but maybe the box is messed up or there's some cosmetic damage. So we can repackage it and do those services and we can ship it back to let's say Egal's account and he could sell it as new. Um, and if there's enough volume, then it makes sense cost wise. And if it's really not good, then we could destroy it. But at least you have the opportunity to save money there and open cases versus just destroying everything, which a lot of private label sellers do. And that really doesn't make any sense. Aidan, regarding the inspection process, Yes. Do you get the instruction on each specific product, how to inspect it, how to yeah. pay? How do you convince? Yeah, great question. Yeah, no, it's a great question. So we do a lot of higher end items based on this model. 
electronics and technology and appliances and outdoor products. So if it's like a phone, you know, I know Asaf has experience with the phones. Um, yeah, we have some software and computers and we could wipe hard drives and reset phones and fix screens. But if it's just something more simple that just needs a check, obviously that's just labor. There's not such advanced work going on there. It really depends on the product. So we're not like going and, you know, opening up, um, you know, circuits and uh, silicon boards. But we have a lot of clients, a lot of Chinese clients too that have products. They have no local U.S. returns capabilities. And they'll come and teach us how to repair the product. And we have enough employees and, and expertise to do it. So it's really case by case. But really, we could do most most of what's needed based on what I've seen. Um, OK, let's go to 13 slide. Um, that's it. So that's just the full solutions of what we do. I'm not going to talk more about it. And then just briefly, um, if you go to 14, um, uh, the guys asked me to give some type of offer. Um, if you go to our boss, right? Um, so I just wrote, um, if you want a free consultation uh, about returns or just discussing the numbers, whether it makes sense to, outsource, to do outsource or to do in-source or to do it in-house, you could email me. I gave you my trade port email there. You guys have that slide 14? Yeah, so that's my offer. Uh, I'm sure we could work out some discounts as well. As I said, it doesn't always make sense for different sellers. So that's why I think it's best to understand the numbers and the possibilities, whether you're selling in the US or Europe. Um, you could email me and I could help you or I could put you in touch with my team. And sure. worst case, we could just give you some advice. So that's that's good. that's my little um, half on returns. I think that's a good overview about the problem and the solutions and companies like Tradeport or things that you should be aware of. Um, maybe we should stop here for questions or conversation. Actually, and after that, I just wanted to go a little into to auditing and claims. Okay, so perfect. For me, it was a good time that I got some information that uh, appeared here. So thank you for that. And sure. I think that, uh, the solution is amazing. And uh, the fact that you're giving a free advice or uh, consulting for uh, the people that are uh, watching us now, it's it's like uh, it's a huge thing. So guys, use it, חברים. אומר לכם פה איתן, אני נותן לכם קודם כל פתרונות, אני מניח שהקשבתם והבנתם את הרעיון הכללי, למי שלא, איתן מדבר על הבעייתיות שיש בהחזרות של מוצרים באמזון, גם לסוחרי מותגים, גם לסוחרי פרייבט לבל, כמובן שהנושא הזה, הבעיה הזאת יכולה להתחלק להמון מישורים שונים, כאשר יש מוצרים שהם מוצרים יותר מורכבים, מוצרים יותר פשוטים, כגון חומרה למחשב או סתם כפפות למטבח. ברור שההתייחסות אליהם תהיה שונה, אבל מדובר פה בחברה שמציעה שירותים של החזרת המוצרים שלכם אליה, בדיקה מרחבית, אולי השמשה חוזרת של המוצרים האלה למסחר, כחדשים, כמשומשים, יש המון שיטות ויש המון בעיות, אבל המון, כל הדרכים האלה בסופו של דבר, מטרתם לחסוך לכם כסף, א', ולא לבזבז את המוצרים שלכם, לא לשלוח אותם לגריסה, לא לשלוח אותם פשוט לפח, ב' להימנע מעמלות אמזון מיותרות כאשר אנחנו מחזירים עליהן את הסחורה ומשלמים להן עוד עמלות על פני עמלות שהן כבר גבו מאיתנו אה, במהלך המכירה. אה, יושב פה איתן ואומר חבר'ה, איתן אגב מנהל עסק ענק ומנהל ברנדים שמגלגלים אה, אסף קרוב ל-180 מיליון דולר דיברנו? כן, 80-200 מיליון דולר. 200 מיליון דולר, אז אני מניח שהתחיל את הצעדים שלו באמזון לפני שעה, שעתיים, אלא מישהו ניסיון מאוד מאוד גדול, וזאת רק שלוחה אחת ממגוון הפרטרונות שהוא מציע לכם, ויושב איתן, שהוא קולגה וחבר ומעריץ גדול של ישראל, ואומר חבר'ה, אתם הצופים שלנו מוזמנים ליצור איתי קשר, הנה המייל שלו, אני אגדיל לכם את זה גם על המסך, מופיע לכם פה צרו איתו קשר, תקבלו עצה בחינם, תראו אם לפרייבט לייבל או לברנד שלכם זה מתאים בכלל. יכול להיות שכן, יכול להיות שאפילו שזה נשמע לכם לא, ואתם אומרים לעצמכם, נו, כמה אכזרות כבר היה לי בשנה האחרונה, מה כבר יש שם להתעסק, ואז אתם מגלים שבתוך כל הדבר הזה, בתוך כל הבלאגן הזה שמופיע בסלר סנטרל של אמזון, בתוך כל הדוחות האלה שאת חלקם אנחנו בכלל לא יודעים לפענח, אתם מוצאים שם מכרה של זהב ואתם אומרים וואו יש פה הרבה עבודה שצריך לעשות אז אולי כדאי בעצם אה, אה, לייצר פה שיתוף פעולה אה, בנושא הזה. טוב, אני רואה שאין שאלות בנושאים האלה, אגב אם אתם מתביישים, לא אמרתי
אמרתי לכם את זה, אבל אני אומר את זה בכל לייב, ואני מניח שאתם כבר מכירים את הנוהל. אתם מוזמנים לשאול שאלות, חברים, גם בנושא של ההחזרות וגם בנושאים הנוספים שאנחנו נדבר עליהם, אנחנו ניגע היום בכמה נושאים, אנחנו ניגע בכמה נושאים של PPC היום. לא סתם ככה אסף אביגדור נמצא ומופיע לכם באחד הריבועים על המסך, כמובן שזה גם בגלל שהוא מאוד ככה נאה לעין ומוסיף לנו איזה שהיא מין תפאורה מאוד מאוד יפה, אבל הוא גם הולך להציג היום איזה שהם כמה קייסים ולדבר על כמה דברים, ומעבר לזה אסף כמו שהבנתם הוא גם האדם, הדמות שחיבר לנו את הקשר המדהים הזה עם איתן ווינר שהציג עכשיו את הדברים שנאמרו פה בחצי שעה האחרונה. עכשיו אתם מוזמנים לשאול שאלות לגבי כל עניין ההחזרות, אתם מוזמנים גם לשאול שאלות באופן כללי על אמזון, כי כמו שאמרתי לכם לא כל יום יושב מומחה אמזון שמגיע להיקפי מסחר כמו הבן אדם שיושב עכשיו בריבוע השמאלי הקטן שאתם אה, רואים על המסך. אה, טוב, איתן, can we continue? No, I... אה, אוקיי, I want to say something. איתן, um, you have mentioned something about the package. Yes. Uh, I know that this is a, a, a big issue when people or customers return product into Amazon and actually Amazon scrapping it because of the packaging. What is the percentage of the packaging that you handle, just the package itself, what you're doing and saving in terms of money for your customers? What is the percentage of the packaging itself problem and how much value you, you really save to people to sell them? Yes, your question is of everything that comes back, what is like really fine, just the packaging has a problem versus what's really defective, right? Right. Exactly. So it really depends on the brand, right? Like you tell me from your background, when you get phones back, they're usually fine. What's the real defect rate of an iPhone? It's quite low. Right. But when someone uses it, you just don't know what happens. With the private label stuff, I mean, it depends what you're talking about. So I have a client who, a private label client, they sell napkin holders and like kitchen type of products. They probably do, it's amazing. They do like 50, 60,000 orders a month. So they get, you know, 3,000 returns. Now, it's a lower price point, maybe $40, $50, $30. It doesn't really make sense to resell as used because no one's buying the used Yankees napkin holder. But as you said, a lot of them are fine. So we open the boxes. The ones that are broken, we'll throw out. The ones that are new, we'll send back as used. I don't know the numbers on, on him, but I think because it's a simple product, most of the returns are... Someone bought the wrong item or someone just bought it to use it for a nice date with their wife and or their girlfriend and returned it, which is like returns fraud, we call it, uh, or bait and switch, if you understand what that means. It's like a kind of like a con uh, or I don't, know, I don't know how to say it in Hebrew exactly. Um, so those types of products are usually easily uh, salvageable. Now we have to get the packaging from the vendor or from you guys to repackage it and make it look really nice. But in a lot of cases, it's just that. It's opened, and we have to send it back to the vendors. So we have to send back. So my company, Quantum, obviously, we use Tradeport as a provider. And we have to send stuff back to the vendor. So the vendor says, hey, is this broken? I say, I don't know, but I don't have the time to test it because I'm not an expert in testing audio equipment. And I have an agreement with you that you take back returns. And then they have to deal with it, which is kind of a pain. But if we didn't have those agreements, you know, with the lower margin electronics type business, you're just not going to make any money. So it's very hard to answer specifically, Asaf, but that's kind of an overview of um, what I see. I would say from my gut, um, most things that come back are fine, but the packages are damaged. Very rarely is it a broken item or a, or a default item. And if that's the case, this is just another good point. Maybe there's a problem with the product. So another cool thing about us is that we see different product returns from different companies. We know how Amazon makes mistakes or does not. And then let's say Asaf is selling uh, umbrellas and all of a sudden his returns go up. I could tell him, hey, Asaf, I think there's a problem with your umbrellas. And you usually don't understand that with the data because you can look at the return report. But if I see, you know, hundreds of umbrellas coming in and they're all broken or, or you know, dangerous, then you want to know that. So it's also like a brand product uh, protection type of, um, you know, data that you can use to improve. Um, so I hope that answered your question. <laughs> okay, so we have another two questions. Uh, sure. 
I, I will ask the first of all the last question. Uh, Asher Bernstein asks if there are any way to deal with open cosmetic products. Uh, great question. Yeah. Um, no. <laughs> no, Asher. <laughs> it was sure. No, there's always a way. There's always a way. But it's really there's legal issues there with health and um, sanity, sanitation, or yeah, something like that. Okay. Health products. If 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 you sell makeup and someone opens it per Amazon and per probably the, the Food and Drug Administration or whatever you call it in Israel, they wouldn't allow you to resell makeup as used, nor would you, your wife or you probably want to buy used um, health products. So it's very hard to do that. And I know people, or I, I don't know, I know of people that try to repackage health or food products. And like, it's just a bad practice because usually you'll get really bad feedback or you'll get suspended because fundamentally it's not meant for multiple use so it's unfortunate because it could be someone opened the product of let's say the lipstick and they never used the lipstick but there's no way for you to know so unfortunately the best practice is to probably throw it out because the risk is too high okay. and if you play a game and for some reason you send someone lipstick that had some some disease on it you know you know who knows but that's just not smart of course, it's not smart. Okay, so other questions of Yoni Hyman. Uh, I think that you pretty answered the, uh, the question, but again, the, uh, the returns percentage, uh, does it change by the category or it's like, yeah? Uh, yeah. yeah, for sure. I, 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 I think I mentioned in the beginning, obviously if you sell apparel or clothing or shoes, a lot of times people will buy you know, 15 different sizes. Uh, Amazon has this wardrobe program where you can do like free returns, um, whether you like it or not, just to try it on because they want to compete with retail stores and that experience. So with apparel and clothing, it's very high. Mm -hmm. uh, electronics, it's kind of high. Um, with some of the private label products that you guys are making, and I don't know the price point, but if it's a cheaper item, if it's 10, 15, 20 dollars, as long as it works pretty well, they shouldn't return it. It may cost more time and effort to return something for fifteen dollars than than not to. Obviously, if it's totally broken, then they will. So yeah, it definitely depends on the category and the price point. So I have some numbers on which categories are are better than others, but um, you should keep an eye on that based on what you're selling. Okay, perfect. Yoni, I'm going to cover this on the other side of the question. What are the categories that you want to say in all categories? I'm not sure that Eitan will not want to say all categories and all categories, even if you don't want to say all categories. But I'm not sure that we can say that the bottom line is that we can say that הנעלה ודברים שנמדדים לפי מידות, אלו הם דברים שיש להם את פוטנציאל ההחזרות הגבוה ביותר, וגם כמה, מוצרי, כמה סוגים או כמה נישות בתוך מוצרי חשמל, שבהם אנשים יכולים, זאת אומרת, בנישות האלה אנשים יכולים לקבל מוצרים, והמוצרים האלה עלולים לעזב אותם בשימוש הראשוני, ואז הם יחזירו אותם בחזרה, כמובן מוצרי פרייבט לייבל אחרים ופשוטים יותר, יהיה בהם פוטנציאל נמוך יותר להחזרות, אבל עדיין תמיד יש פוטנציאל החזרות, כולנו יודעים שהחזרות קיימות בכל נישה ונישה, בכל מוצר ומוצר. אוקיי, בואו נראה אם יש לנו פה עוד שאלות, אני רואה שאין לנו פה עוד שאלות נוספות בנושא הזה. So, Eitan, um, I think that we can close the subject of the returns on Amazon, and uh, okay. what do you want to talk about next? Right, so I want to like, uh, um... talk about something else, but it's a related topic because the theme here is to understand your costs. You, you know how we call it in Hebrew? We say lefanek, lefanek, lefanek. Yeah, more subjects, more tips. One more time? Sorry? Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, I understand. Um, but my point is that it's not a separate topic. It's the same topic and theme. Ah, but it's the same. That. Okay. It, it, it's the same theme because in Amazon, you know, there's a lot of opportunity, but you have to be on top of returns and costs and fees. So I'm just going to talk about this briefly because I know, you know, running out of time, but there's this whole concept and it's it, just a little history on this. So again, we started selling, I don't know, 10, 11 years ago. And I remember I had a programmer or someone managing my account then that was noticing lots of issues with Amazon where we weren't getting paid the full amount or... customer would return something late and we wouldn't get the credit or there was damaged or lost inventory and as you know there's so many products going into FBA that they make mistakes 
Now, the actual mistakes they make could be anywhere from honestly, this is actually a fact um, based on data and auditing between one and 2%. But if you're selling, let's say you're doing, I don't know, for example, uh, $10 million of sales, you know, one to two of that could be one dollars of credits that you should get back. And those are credits that go straight to the bottom line, it's just full value. Now, if you don't audit your account and know how to do that, I don't even know what that means. It's a big problem because you're just losing out on money that's really free money. They're not gonna give it to you unless you ask. And the only way you know is either you do it again, like the returns, you do it in-house and you understand the data, or you can use a company or a virtual assistant or whoever that knows how to do it. So my interesting history with this is I actually built a software to do this about 11 years ago. And one of the one of the programmers I was working with like kind of ran with the software and made some type of company or service around it. Since then, I don't know, every time I go to this Prosper show that I'm involved in, there's a different company that pops up. I know there's some in Israel and there's some um, in China that work on account auditing. Um, and the point is they're really experts at that. So they could do the auditing, they could see the mistakes and I'll go into that in a moment. And then usually they'll charge you a percentage of the money they find, but that's usually fine. Cause as I said, if you're not an expert at it, even if you're paying them a percent, they're finding all these mo this money that you never would have touched. And as I go into the slides and I'll go into a little depth, you'll see why it's quite complicated. But some of these companies specifically one I'm gonna recommend that I use that I think is great, um, would benefit all of you guys. They really do a great job for my company and I'm a client. And furthermore, just to connect the dots, they also connect with Tradeport. So all the things that Tradeport does, I mentioned, but one of the things that Tradeport does, as I mentioned in the beginning of the process, is that when we get the products in, what if Amazon doesn't send you the item back? Or what if it's damaged? So you have to submit a claim. So we used to have where we would just give the customers the data and they could submit claims. But customers don't really know how to do that. So it requires photos, it requires stickers. So we teamed up with this company called um, Getita, which I'm gonna mention later, and Asaf knows them too. And they actually handle the, the claims process. Um, so they could do it for a whole account, um, which I'll get into do all the claims that they review. But also they could do it on the physical removers if you're also a trade port client. So that's the connection between the two companies and the topic. And if, yeah, now looking at slide 15, just high level returns audit. So that's the first thing. So there's a return. Um, a reimbursement was never actually paid out. So basically there was a return, but Amazon never paid. Sometimes that happens, believe it or not. Um, there's a return, but it wasn't refunded uh, after 45 days, right? So a customer received the refund, but they never returned the item. So Amazon credits the customer right away, but you never got it back. That happens a lot, believe it or not. And you have to check for that, especially if it's an expensive item. Sometimes there's return overcharge. I mean, this is all pretty straightforward. Um, the customer got back more than the item was. They were sent the wrong item back. That requires pictures to explain that you got the wrong item. Damage returns, returns after 60 days. Again, um, pretty obvious. But those are all physical return components where you have to look at the items you're getting back. Um, warehouse audit is a bit more data driven where Amazon says they got five, but they got 10. Amazon lost inventory, Amazon damaged inventory, Amazon destroyed inventory. There's no way you could possibly know that unless you're running advanced reporting and doing calculations. So some people do that on their own and they're really on top of it. But I'll just tell you from personal experience, it's very, very tedious and the rules constantly change. So it's really important to have an expert to do it or to have a company um, that does it. If you go to the next slide, um, Shesha's Ray, um, similar types of issues. Again, you guys can read this after, there's a lot of detail, um, but accounting audits, the fees are wrong, the categories are wrong, the pick and pack fees are wrong. Uh, it's just so much. I mean, look how much is just here and each of these zones, each, each thing is its own uh, sugya. Um, inventory replacements, et cetera, um, removal order issues. And if you go to the next slide, shipping audit, they damage the boxes, damage by carrier, um, multi-channel issues. You can even tell, the point is you could do all of these types of auditing. And again, 
unless you have really good software systems, ticket systems, follow up, you're not going to get the money back. Um, this specific company is graded it because they follow up. So let's say they submit a claim to Amazon and Amazon's like, okay, we're not sure, or we'll give you $20, but they won't really give up. They'll say, no, we actually should get $40. It's very important to read Amazon's response to why they're denying the claim, because then you can learn what how the process works. So that's this company um, that I use, which I'm going to mention. Uh, the next slide is really, really good at that because they've just been doing that for a long time and they have hundreds, if not thousands of clients. Um, and again, they work with Treeport too, so kind of works in my world um, and, and helps me get, give value to customers. So I spoke to them and Asaf knows these guys too. I think Yoni is going to be speaking to you guys in the, in the, in the fall on a different webinar. He's actually from Israel, from Renana. But this is the offer that they want to give. So they're going to give 20% um, uh, instead of, they usually take 25% of the money that they recover. And I'll tell you, percentages are important, but they're usually getting a lot much more percentage than most other companies because they just do a lot of different audit detail. Um, if you look at all the slides above, that's really a lot of what they're working on and you can see it on their website. So if you go to that link at the bottom, I, I know you can't click from the webinar, I, but maybe I, we I, could send it out. We'll copy the link and then- we'll Yeah, so you go, if you send it out, the link in the offer, it's a yeah, really yeah. good opportunity to sign up. Worst yeah. case, they do a free audit and they say, hey, you got, we audited your account and we found you $10,000. Do you want us to work on it? Or maybe it's more, maybe it's less, but it doesn't cost you any money um, unless they find something. So it's really a no-brainer. I use them. Again, it works with Treport too. Whether you use them, whether you do it in-house, whether you do, whether you have a VA, you really need to be doing it if you want to be conscious of that um, money, of that savings. Because again, one, two, three percent of your sales are lost in the mix. And why not get that back? It's kind of silly not to try. And again, there's no, there's no commitment to to do it. So it's kind of like sells for itself. Like if I told you, hey, I have free money for you. Do you want to do it? Um, so again, if you have another company that you think is better or different, you're doing it, great. But if you're not, it's really not okay. Even if you're very small, because every dollar counts and it's very you know user friendly. So that's the offer from them. And uh, that's my, uh, I think that's my, uh, Final slide. Perfect. So you can find the, the link uh, on the chat. Chaveni, you can find the link in the chat. The link is the link is short because it's a short bitly. She will lead you to the part of the Shema of the market. And that you can do many things. As I said, Ethan, there is a very high percentage of accidents. The percentage is that there is a company that is doing this in the form of a bond of 20. סליחה, היא עושה את זה ב-20 במקום 25 אחוז מהחזרות, מהכסף שהיא מצליחה לייצר לכם בחזרה מול ההחזרות האלה, וכמו שהוא אמר, זה די יהיה מטופש לא לנסות, ובעיקר, בעיקר, בעיקר, אם יש לכם תמונות מאוד גדולות של החזרות, למה לא לנסות את זה בכלל? הרי בסופו של יום זה לא עולה לכם עכשיו איזשהו משהו, וכל הצדדים יכולים ליהנות פה מהווין ווין סיטואשן הזה. זהו, כן, אני רואה שאתה ככה דרוך. יש לך איזושהי שאלה נוספת לשאול, איזשהו משהו להוסיף לכל הדברים המדהימים שאיתן דיבר עליהם פה? כן, דיברתי אליך, אסף. לא, אני רק רוצה להגיד שסוגדילה היא חברה מאוד טובה, ואנחנו יודעים, אנחנו פסטו את שלהם, והם חברה מאוד טובה, ואנחנו חושבים שיש להם טובות מנהלים לטובות לטובות. So we do in PPC Win, I highly recommend working with them. Uh, they have a very good solution. Okay. I, know, I, I know it's less popular here in Israel. Uh, people less try to find this type of solution. It's familiar with, actually with these objects. And you know, it doesn't cost you any money. Why not try it? 
אני לגמרי איתך אסף, אני שוב מדגיש את זה, מי שיצטרך קצת, קצת הסברים על כל הנושאים שדוברו, אתם יכולים לשאול עכשיו בלייב, אנחנו עדיין בזמנים ואנחנו יכולים להסביר לכם, אבל חברים, למה לא לנסות? זאת, זאת אומרת, שוב, אם אתם שוחחים תקופה ארוכה, בין אם יש לכם החזרה אחת ביום או אלף החזרות ביום, אני לא יודע מה גודל החשבון שלכם, בעיקר, בעיקר, בעיקר אני מדבר על אותם אנשים. שיש להם מוצרים שנמכרים במחירים מאוד מאוד גבוהים וכל מכירה, כל החזרה בעצם שמתבצעת בחשבון שלהם מורגשת היטב בכיס שלהם ואתם אומרים לעצמכם איך אני אדע עכשיו מה המצב של המוצר, האם הוא באמת שבור, אם הוא באמת פגום, האם באמת החזירו אותו מסיבה מוצדקת או סתם כי מישהו השתמש בו יומיים ולא היה בא לו על זה יותר, במקום להשמיד את המוצר או במקום לסמוך על האינטואיציה ככה הלא לא בדיוק מלוטשת של אמזון, יש פה גוף שזאת ההתמחות שלו, והגוף הזה אומר לכם שוב, חברים, 20% מתוך הכסף, מתוך הסכום שאנחנו נצליח להחזיר בעקבות ההחזרות אלינו, 80% אליכם. fair enough לחלוטין חבר'ה, אחלה דיל מבחינתי, יש לכם את הקישור בצ'אט, יש לכם את איתן פה שהסביר לכם בהרחבה ובפירוט רב איך המערכת הזאת עובדת ומה הם עושים, ומעבר לזה כמובן באמצע הלילה הוא גם נתן לכם את הפרטי קשר האישיים שלו לפנייה אליו במייל. איתן, something else that you want to tell to our viewers? No, I wanna, I wanna hear from myself. I'm, uh, I think I'm, talk, I'm done talking about uh, credits. I want to hear about sales and advertising a little bit. Ah, okay. So we're going to talk about sales and yeah. credits. Yeah, it's more exciting. It's more exciting. Actually, this is the most exciting topic, uh, subject on Amazon. Yep. There's uh, um, a lot of questions around, yep. uh, so uh, Asaf, okay. it's yours now. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Eitan. Uh, so I'm thank going you. to talk about two tips to help sellers with their PPC campaigns. Uh, for those that uh, doesn't really know me, I'm Asaf uh, from PPC Winner. PPC Winner is a SaaS solution To create and manage your advertising uh, on Amazon so whenever you want to create uh, a campaign uh, you can come to do it through our system and you create a, a campaign in less than two minutes less than making a sandwich create, uh, I know that many Israelis knows our company here because of the last uh, webinar with the uh, legal um, so I'm not going to discuss really about just about PPC winner I just want to show you two tips how to increase your sales with the uh, two tactics, okay? And, and Aitan, I'll be happy for you. Can I stop you for a second? Yeah. Okay, I, I'm gonna be rude a little bit, Aitan, but I think that most of our viewers are uh, Hebrew speakers. And uh, I think that Aitan, your Hebrew is quite good. So maybe that's how we switch to Hebrew okay. because- Okay, um, I don't understand, I don't understand. I want to get Aitan feedback after the, after the session, so... <laughs> no, it's okay, it's okay, let's do it. I'll give you two tips, really quick and interesting, on how to develop the products of yours. I also use the product of Helium 10, to explain this example. אז אם לדוגמה המוצר שנמצא פה בסקרינשוט הזה זה המוצר שלכם, אוקיי, okay, נראה יפה, נראה נחמד, אתם בעצם, מה שהייתם רוצים בשביל להגביר את המכירות שלו, הייתם רוצים לעשות קמפיין מתחרים. אז איך בעצם אנחנו עושים את הדבר הזה שנשמע קמפיין מתחרים, שנשמע ככה מוזר, איך אני בעצם לוקח את המוצר שלי ושם אותו אצל המתחרים, אז בואו בוא נראה איזה טקטיקה קלילה כזאתי, הסלייד הבא. בעצם נותן לכם את השקופית של אליום 10. רק תגיד לי אם אני בסלייד נכון או לא. זה. נכון. נכון, רואים את הבלק בוקס של אליום 10, ויש לנו שיתוף פעולה עם אליום 10, וגם הפתעה קצרה לכל מי שנמצא פה בסשן. שכחתי לספר לאנשים על ההפתעה, מרוב ההתרגשות לרעיון. תשמור את זה לסוף, אתה לא רוצה לשמור את ההפתעה. לא, לא אמרתי שיש הפתעה. אה, יש פה הפתעה רצינית, איך שכחתי להגיד לך, יש פה הטבה מאוד מאוד רצינית. רמז, תסתכלו על המסך. אוקיי. 
אז ככה אם תצטרך קצת להגדיל, שגם אני אראה, אנחנו נמצאים בפלטבורק של N עם N, ובעצם מה שאנחנו רוצים לחפש, אנחנו שמים בפרודקט טרגטינג, כן, מצד ימין איפה ש... מסומן פה, אם אתה יכול לסמן את זה למעלה. סמן את זה למעלה, פרודוקט טרקטינג זה טאפ, זאת אומרת בלק בוקס זה מקום לפילטור מוצרים, ודרך פרודוקט פילטרים, עכשיו עברנו לטאפ הימני ביותר למעלה, לפרודוקט טרקטינג. אוקיי, פרודוקט טרקטינג. אתה שם את הטאפים שלך, של המוצר שלך, ואתה בעצם רוצה למצוא מוצרים מתחרים. שבוא נגיד שיש להם מקסימום ריוויוז של 20, נקרא לזה ככה, או עם פרייסינג שהוא טיפה יותר גבוה ממך, ואז בעצם נותן למערכת לחפש. אתה יכול לעבור לשקופית הבאה, mm-hmm. ואז אתה... כן, לשקופית הזאת, ואז אתה פתאום מוצא מוצרים אחרים של מתחרים, mm-hmm. שנמצאים פחות יותר באותה קטגוריה שלך, באותם אה, מוצרים שלך, שאתה יכול לראות שיש להם נגיד... מעט פריוויוז ועדיין מוכרים בכמות יפה. אוקיי. Okay. אתה רוצה, אתה רוצה בעצם לקחת את האסים שלהם ולבנות mm-hmm. לך קמפיין ידני צדדי, mm-hmm. שבו אתה מכניס את האסים שלהם, ואז כשאנשים יחפשו את המוצרים שלהם, אתה תופיע. מצוין. כזה קל. קל. טיפ מדהים, נורא נורא פשוט. אני עכשיו ככה אקח את כל מה שאמרת וברשותך... אתרגם את זה עוד תרגום נוסף לעברית, למי שלא בדיוק יודע. ככה, לא חלילה, לא שאתה לא מובן, פשוט אתה יודע, יש פה אנשים שהם גם בצעדים הראשונים שלהם, הם תמיד שמחים לשמוע עוד איזושהי הבהרה. אז ככה, אומר השר דבר פשוט, תקשיבו, יש באמזון בחצי שנה האחרונה, אם אני לא טועה, אולי אפילו קצת יותר, איזשהו סוג פרסום חדש שלא היה עד כה, שנקרא פרודוקט טרגטינג, זאת אומרת, אנחנו היום לא מפרסמים רק לפי קיוורדס, או סלפסטיינס, אנחנו מפרסמים גם לפי אסינים של מתחרים שלנו. זאת אומרת, אנחנו יכולים להופיע בחלק התחתון, מתחת לתמונה, באזור הספונסר. עכשיו אומר אסף, וזה מתחבר גם ללייב שעשיתי פה עם נצח טופז לפני מספר שבועות, תקשיבו, הרבה מאוד מהתנועה מגיעה אליכם מדפי החיפוש, כלומר מהדף חיפוש הראשי של אמזון, אבל 50% מהתנועה, ולא ידעתם על כך, אני מניח, מגיעה מדפים של מתחרים, כלומר התנועה מגיעה מהמתחרים שלכם, אחוז מאוד מאוד גבוה, 50 אחוז, כמו שאני זוכר אם אני לא טועה אז ציין נצח, מגיע מדפים של מתחרים, אז למה לא נבחר במתחרים הרלוונטיים ביותר למוצר שלנו ונגנוב במרכאות את אותם אנשים לדף שלנו? עכשיו אומר השר דבר פשוט, אם אנחנו נלך למתחרים שמוכרים את המוצר במחיר יותר נמוך מאיתנו מן הסתם אנחנו לא נצליח לשלוף את האנשים אלינו. אם אנחנו נלך למתחרים שיש להם 4,000 ריוויוז ולנו יש רק עשרה, אז מן הסתם לא נצליח לשלוף את האנשים האלה אלינו. יש בהליון 10 אופציה מאוד פשוטה, לסנן את המוצרים לפי כמות ריוויוז ולפי מחיר. כלומר, ומוצרים מן הסתם מאותה נישה, מאותה קטגוריה. כלומר, אנחנו יכולים למצוא אינסוף מוצרים. שנמכרים טוב, מצליחים להגיע לכמות מחירות יפה, חודשית, יומית, רוויניוז לא רואים בכלל, ולפרסם את המוצר שלנו שם. טיפ מדהים מ-PPC ווינר, אסף, אהבתי, אימצתי, עוד טיפים מפינוק. בוא נתקדם לפינוק הבא. מה זה? בוא נתקדם לפינוק הבא. לפינוק הבא, זהו, הפינוק ששכחתי לדבר עליו? לא, לא, לפינוק הבא של הטיפים. אה, בדיוק, אבל שתהיה לי. נעבור למסך הבא ובואו נדבר רגע על המובייל. זהו, סטף לעזור לי, כי אנחנו פה, אני רואה את השקפים מפוזרים. על הקודם. הנה, זה המאמין. לא, זה המוצר שלנו, אבל תחזור חזרה לזה. יפה. אז ככה המוצר שלנו נראה במובייל, נכון? ככה בעצם אותו מוצר נראה במובייל, ומה שאנחנו בעצם יודעים מעולם הדסקטופ, זה שאם... כשאתה בונה את הליסט שלך, אז אתה, אנשים קודם כל מסתכלים קודם כל על הבולץ, ועל ה- description. נכון. אבל מה קורה בעצם בעולם המובייל? בעולם המובייל, ה-description מופיע לפני הבולץ. ולכן מה שאני רוצה לחדד, שצריך להשקיע ב-description, בגלל שרוב היוזרים היום משתמשים במובייל, רוב הקניות נעשות היום מהמובייל, אז ה-description הופך להיות מאוד רלוונטי. וצריך להכניס לשם את כל המילות מפתח שאתה מפרסם ב-PPC שלך, להכניס אותם לשם, לשתול אותם שם, בכדי שאנשים ישר יראו והמערכת נמצאה כשאתה עושה את הפרסום שלך, 
ונגיע לליסטים שלך. עכשיו אם תלך לסלייד הבא, היא תראה איזה הפתעה מסוימת, תראה מה, מפ... מה מגיע לפני בעצם ה-description, אוקיי, זה היה המסך הראשון, זה היה המסך הראשון, זה היה המסך השני, שאתה רואה, לא במובייל, הופ, תראה, יש פה את, ה... את המתחרים, ספונסר פרודקטס, שמקודם המלצתי בעצם לעשות קמפיין מתחרים, תראה איפה הוא מופיע, הוא מופיע ישר שם, הוא מופיע בעצם לקחת התמונה שלך, אתה שם תמונה שלך, ופתאום אמזון שוקל לך שם מוצרים מתחרים. אז איך שני הדברים האלה מתקשרים? כי פתאום אתה רואה שזה עוד חמד את המובייל, זה הדבר בעצם השני שהלקוח רואה. והדבר השלישי שהוא רואה זה יהיה הדסקריפשן, וזה כבר הדבר שדיברתי עליו, שהדסקריפשן זה בעצם הסטייד הבא, שמגיע לפני הבולט. ולכן חשוב לשים דסקריפשן מאוד ברור. עם כל מיעוט המפתח. שזה הפוך לחלוטין למה שאנחנו רגילים לראות בוורל. כן, ברוב העולם עובר לקנות מהמובייל, קונים מהמובייל, ו... ואנשים צריכים לאמץ בעצם את הדרך חשיבה, שגם הדיסקריפשן מאוד חשוב. אוקיי, אז אני ככה העברתי עכשיו והראיתי את הדיסקריפשן איך שהוא נראה במובייל, ואני חושב שפה מסתיימת מסכת הטיפים המדהימים שלך. איתן, did you understand everything? Yep. I guess some of the more technical words I didn't understand, but since I know kind of the game, I understand. I've spoken to a soft before and evaluated a software, which I have to say is really good. There's a lot of softwares out there. I was talking to a soft about this in Chicago. Since I started my show, The first year I told him there was no Amazon software for, for PPC because it didn't exist. Mm -hmm. And then in, it started to exist. And then I would say this year there may have been 10 softwares, but you know they're all a bit different. Some are more for agencies, some are more for private label, some are really not great. Um, the cool thing about um, PPC Winner, and I met with Asaf's, uh, what was it, Nadav, right? The yeah. CEO. Mm -hmm. um, it's really algorithmic based. It has all the uh, Israeli uh, Mossad intelligence built in and it kind of works on its own, which is which is really good. Um, again, you still have to kind of monitor it, but in very in many ways you can kind of set it and forget it um, and see a lot of value, lower a cost, higher sales. and it's really, really um, helpful for, private label, for mid-size sellers, even for large sellers, you just have to kind of um, tweak the settings a bit. And it's something that's very hard for beginners, even for us, just every day with the change in ads, to be on top of these trends, because every day there's a new program, bid plus, video ads, it's just nonstop. So if these guys can do it for you, like all these other things we mentioned in the webinar, like why not try that, you know, still keep your eye on it, um, But yeah, it's really cool how um, it kind of works in the background while you're sleeping. Madim, as I'm really enjoying it and to be between two experts uh, for uh, different subjects around Amazon. Um, but uh, now we need to move to our next subject, which is a great surprise that I forgot to tell, uh, to, tell uh, to our viewers that we have a surprise today. Uh, Asaf, what's so, going on? What's going on? We're going to talk about the English language, and we're going to say that everyone who will be able to get the summer package of us, okay, with a code coupon non-stop, as it says in the... בקבוצה, בעצם יוכל לקבל את ה-PPC ווינר לחודש, פלוס הליום 10 לחודש במתנה, ולעלות של זה יהיה 25 דולר, שזה 50 אחוז מהמחיר של PPC ווינר. אז אתה מקבל גם את PPC וגם הליום 10 לחודש, ואני רק אחדד שזה כל מי שאין חשבון של הליום 10. טוב, אני אהיה ישראלי כזה, ואני אגיד, אוקיי, לא בעיה לפתוח אותי מאיר, אבל אתה לא אמרת את זה. 
אגב, אני צריך להראות עכשיו ולהגדיל מסך כמה עולה הליום 10 בפני עצמו בחודש. רק הליום 10 עולה 97 דולר. 97 דולר, חברים. CPC ווינר עולה 50 דולר, ביחד זה 147 דולר, ו-25 דולר לקנות כזאת הטבה, חסכון של... כשפונים אליי הליום 10 לבד, המון אנשים במהלך חודש יגאל יש לך עשרה אחוז הנחה, אין שאלונים. אין שאלונים, ועוד פעם, הקוד קופון הוא יהיה נונסטופ. אתה יכול פשוט לרשום נונסטופ. כן. במילה. קוד קופון, נונסטופ, כמו שכתוב. נונסטופ במילה אחת, נכון? נכון. וצריך להירשם אחר כך. אני ארשום את זה עכשיו בלייב שלנו, חברים, קוד קופון, נונסטופ. אוקיי. אתם יכולים בינתיים להמשיך לדבר, לשוחח, אתם הרי הכרתם, לפני שהכרתם אותי אז אני מניח שיש לכם הרבה נושאים משותפים, אני בינתיים אכתוב להם את הקוד קופון עצמו. אוקיי. איתן, when is the next prosper show? when we should buy the ticket? the next prosper show is, I don't know, I have to look at the date, it's in March. but I think the tickets should go on sale like in maybe September. but you can check out the website. Um, it's kind of a trip, but it's uh, it's a good experience. It's uh, it's definitely worth it if you can come. It is the best the best uh, exhibition for Amazon sellers uh, for Amazon World actually. Uh, it really is. I mean, you have you have all the vendors there, most if not all. You have lots of sellers, lots of great content. So again, I'm not um, as involved with the show as much as I used to because we sold it to this uh, bigger trade show company but I'm you know I advise and guide them a bit and um, you know it's not cheap to fly to to Vegas but it's really worth it because it's just the amount you'll learn um, I think you'll make the money back uh, quite quickly um, that's the point so if you if you uh, if you can if you could, if anyone if, if anyone can come you It's a quite unique uh, and you know valuable experience. Amazing. Okay guys, like uh, every good show, every good movie, it's come to the end. It uh -huh. uh, was amazing to be host of two of you. It was a great honor to have you here at Tan. Uh, Asaf, you too as always, you know. Toda Rabal Atsufim Shalano. חברים, קיבלתם היום המון טיפים בהמון נושאים שונים, בעניינים לוגיסטיים יותר באמזון, בעניינים יותר שיווקיים ופרסומיים באמזון. יש לנו פה שני מומחים, מומחים על המסך, יש לכם אותי על המסך, יש לכם שני מומחים שאמרו לכם שאפשר ליצור איתם כפל קשר באופן ישיר, קיבלתם הטבות בלא מעט נושאים, אנחנו פה בשבילכם כמו כל שבוע, ואנחנו נמשיך להפתיע אתכם בשבועות הקרובים עם לייבים נוספים חדשים ומפתיעים. חברים, שיהיה לכם ערב טוב, כותבים לנו פה כבר שהיה אחלה לייב, שאפו, אני שמח שאנשים נהנו, שיהיה לכם המשך שבוע מצוין, וחברים, אנחנו נפרדים מכם להתראות. תודה רבה. תודה רבה. אוקיי, רק שנייה.